right, we're back again with the first part of the day around for the Sturm Tiger. So as you can see, uh, all I've done is just I put a piece of uh, polystyrene under there just to lift it up slightly, and nothing underneath this part. You see, it quite a bit of a lip there, yeah. and I've just used the old Poundland polyfiller. Let that dry. And then I'm going to use this just to give it a base coat of this uh, cheap, I think it's a pound of tube or something from the works or something like that. As it's burnt umber. So all I'm going to do is just put a, you know, a few blobs on it and brush it out. So, you know, nothing, nothing special as they say, just to get the actual colour into the... Uh, the base of the diorama or vignette or you know small display piece it doesn't have to be as long as you've got the colour down try and if possible you know get all the white bits as well off the, uh, the polyfiller as you can see it goes on quite easy it'll probably won't take long to dry with this heat and it's soaked in, it soaks in quite well as well, so so it just gives me a good base to work from from when I'm uh, going to do the next stage, which will be the ground covered and scatter. So, so you don't need that much pen, you know it'll, it'll it'll spread out quite a lot. You don't need a lot. As you can see them didn't really put a lot on there and it seems to spread out quite nicely. Don't think I'll need any more. It lasts for, you know, this should last. Yeah, sometimes you might get a few bits of white things coming through, but that's not to worry because they'll soon get covered up with the ground scatter. Or whatever or whatever base. You're going to do a little bit more, just a touch more. Yeah, that's it. Maybe a bit too much there. I'm just get that spread out. And all we can do now is uh, is leave that to dry before we can do anything else. Once this is dry, I'll get back to you. So it's quite, it's quite a rich colour that, but obviously this is just a base. You know what you're gonna work from. Nothing too special. So I'm gonna stop this here and let this dry, and then when I get back to you, we shall start the next stage. So uh, we'll catch you later. Right, we're back again. As you can see, the brown's dry now. There's a few white marks, which you really can't be helped. What I'm going to try and do is use the rest of the uh, PVA I've got left in here. I'm going to spread the PVA all over the all over the board. And what I've got in this container, just let's just get this all out of it. May as well. We can throw the container away. Just put some warm water in it and and use it. See how far that's gonna go. Put the lid back on and just stand it up a little bit and see if I can get any more coming out of it. Stay there, right? So basically, what I've got in this container is some brown towel grout, grout, and some a bag of the uh, bag of soil that I got from Poundland for a big bag. So. I'll just and I've passed that so it's all fine, there's no oops in it. So basically what I'm going to do obviously is, is just get all this glue spread out. You know that you know this you know the score with this. Do 
just get it all spread out. This is just to build the base up. See, it's been it's been sieved. I sieved the uh, the saw because I kept the um, remainder of it because it's quite it's quite good for ground scatter as well. But it's not what I want on here. So. We don't need to uh, sieve it because I've already used it, so just get it on. Basically, just get it on. All over it. It's quite messy, so you know, put a piece of paper underneath or kitchen roll. Don't want it all over your clean bench. Well, mine's never clean, but. Some point. Yeah, brown grout, brown towel grout. You know, I think it's about three or four quid a big bag. You know, fairly big bag. Just mix it with your soil, and that should uh, work quite nicely. So let's say it's reusable. Whatever we're not going to use now will be sieved back off. Let's give it a Gentle pat down for now. Get into the corners. Basically, when I leave it, I'm just going to leave that just to, just to set a little bit, and then we'll uh, shake it dry. You know what I mean? When it's dry, I can shake all the excess off and see where that leaves us. Let's just get this piled up here. Again, here. More the stick, the better. But obviously, this part's probably not going to stick as good as other parts. And I'll just redo it if I have to. So it's not uh, it's not too expensive to do. So it is bigger, basically a bag of brown tile grout. A tile, I can't even say tile grout. And uh, you know, a bag of cheap soil from Poundland. Pound, just sieve it, and you come up with. Uh, just the coarse stuff that's left in it after I've sifted it. So you can still use that for other bits and pieces, it's not going to go to waste. We can use that. And also I've, um, while I've been waiting for things to dry, I've been getting some balsa wood and some lolly sticks and I've uh, given me a, a wash in the old Vallejo Dipping wash, which is the uh, 73300. Let me just quite see that through there. Brilliant stuff. So, Mr. Ken put me onto that stuff. Fantastic. And it just takes a, you know, gives you a nice, I know it's wood anyhow, but it gives you that nice colour as well. So, I recommend you get that stuff. It's versatile. So I use it with tracks, like Simon uses it on numbers and numbers of things. And I say I have the black one as well, so it works, it works a treat. It really does. So I'll we'll, we'll wait till this is set uh, up a little bit farther and then once I've shaken it clean, well all the excess off I should say, and then I'll get back to you. So okay, catch you soon. Right, we're back again. As you can see, I've uh, <coughs> excuse me got the base, the soil and um, 
brown grouting on there. You see, it's just a bit rough as I wanted it. So yeah, it's been left for a good 24 hours and it's yeah, dry. So what I'm going to do next is I have this. If you anybody who has orchids, use the orchid soil, which is like a wood and compost mixed together. So all I've done with this is the orchid is the orchid soil. Is I've just put it in the blender and I've got it to look like you know like chippings and bark and things like that you know so you know I strain it for a big bag and you just zap it so what I'm going to do with this I'm just going to uh, give this a she's a new bottle so let's see what happens there we go just give this a this is just PVA glue and water give it a good soak What I tend to do with this PVA and wash when I've finished it, I go and clean the uh, the nozzle. Otherwise, when you come back, you'll, it'll, you'll never get it to work. So what I'll do now is it'll just, just you know, it doesn't have to be completely all of it, just a scattering of it. It's just to build up a bit of a bit of you know a layers texture different. You know, I so said just one, one, uh, one thing. It's not too. Uh, do anything else. So let's put a bit underneath there. The tank will be a lot of the uh, this stem tank will be going there. So let me just a bit over there. That's it. And maybe on the front. And then what I'll do again is I'll just give it another bit of a dousing again, just to make sure it sticks. The people have different ways of doing things. This is the way I do. This isn't the way you should do. You have your own. You have your own uh, methods, and this is just mine. So I'll leave that to dry a little bit, and then I'll give it a little bit of the old isopropanol all on the top just to finish it off. And then we're going to go on to the next layer. So that's all we can do. This is all I can do at the moment. Is just a very small, little, small little short videos of doing of building the ground layers up. Um, so yeah, so that'll be dry before, well I shouldn't take too long in this heat, and then I'll get back to you again, so we'll see you soon. Nice, back again ladies and gentlemen, I've had a big boo-boo, I've uh, thought I was recording when I wasn't, so what I've had to do is, I'll show you what I did do before I realised that I was recording, which is just the front part of the, the diorama. The, uh, the grass and a few flowers and leaves and things like that and I thought I was recording it when it obviously wasn't so I apologise but I'm going to show you something very similar anyhow to what I've, what, I've, what I've just done I'll do it again on here so what I've done just to protect what I've done now is I've covered this over just kitchen roll i uh, cut a sort of rough shape out what I want excuse me and all I'm going to do now is just best I can with this is just just PVA and water on here just to I just want a rough shape of some grass don't have to be perfect you know nothing needs to be perfect as long as I've got sort of some shape as you can see on here I've got a nail just a little nail in the corner there for my static grass applicator I'm not using the um, I'm going to use the applicator not the, um, the the mat thing I'm going to use one of these you should probably see them before they're quite cheap and I'm just going to put some I think this is a mixture of two and four millimeter grass so what I'll do with those eyes, I'll pop that on top of there, make sure it gets locked in properly. I'll attach the uh, crocodile clip just to there, he says. Like so, and you can see obviously is the red light on this one. Oh yeah, you can see, there we are, that means it's active. So what I'll do is I'll just tip you know, put a switch here on and just 
just go along it, build it up gradually. And it stands up, and then you do that, and that's how you get a crackle off the uh, off the nail, so you know it's working. <laughs> so let's keep doing that, building it up, building it up. I do it this way. Some people do it different ways to me, and then I just let it run around the top of it, just to help it stand up. I don't know if the camera can actually see it picking it, picking it up. Probably can't. If I just maybe lower it down. Can you actually see it picking it up? No, I don't think you can. So I'll just use the rest of that. Yeah, this is a mixture of two and four millimeter. Do for now. So I'll just disconnect that. And now what I tend to do as well is I just give it a little blow, just to help it stand. So, let's take that little nail out of there. I'll just unscrew it so I can put the excess grass back into here. So what I'll do is I'll just take this off here. It's just give me these little patches of grass that I want. I really want from the uh, thing. So this is say that the base is just the same as it was before. You know, before I thought I was recording this. Oh no, I did a few twigs and branches and things like that. Uh, and so I'll leave it exactly the same as I've done there. I've just done a patch of grass there. I will add so I've got my own leaf cutter. So what are you? Where have I put my leaves? Are oh, they here? So I've got some own leaves and a few flowers which I've, I had these, I forgot all I had these, I usually make my own but I've got some of these I bought them quite a while ago these ones uh, I've just been digging around in my stash and I forgot I had them so yeah, these are from Mixed Garden and they're from seriesplay.com so all they are these is the same again just, the, uh, just to add a bit of colour more than anything and get into them and these have got a sticky back on them so but easy to access. He says. So what I'll do is I'll just take a. I don't want them too big on this side, so if I take one of these little small ones off. There's uh, my tweezers, my fine tweezers. There we are. Uh, just uh, it just gives a little bit of colour. I can just pop it into there. Again, that's another one. Up there. Nothing, nothing, you know. It's just a, a, a somewhere to show the tank up on, really. The assault gun. Do it again, haven't that? So I think probably three is probably enough on there. So I'll just pop the those away. I think three is probably enough. Take the Them back there. As you know, I've got me on the uh, little cutter from Green Stuff World with me with me leaves. So there again, I'll just put a few into me into my palm of my hand, and then I'll just sprinkle them again. Just round and round we go. And a few over here. To make some more grass, I'm gonna have to make some more. Uh, yeah, I've got some more somewhere that I made myself. Sure, I have somewhere. Where did I put them? Where did I put them? Under here.
strange as they there when they put them there. Gotta do a few more, a few more leaves. It's just the RAF practicing as normal. See, it's not exactly a. It's more of a display thing, really, isn't it? Dio. It's more of a vignette, just a. Just to show the tank, the assault tank, assault gun off. Really, nothing, nothing too elaborate. Which I did say in the first bit, it was more of a, a, uh, just, just you know, no buildings or anything like that. I was toying with the idea of. I made this quite a while ago. These. Uh, just out of foam board, foam, cut foam out of the squares, tarp, made some tarps out of um, what do you call the paper, crepe paper, is it crepe paper or I just made different sort of sizes of uh, you know ammo boxes and things and and I've done all this wood as well which I was gonna do on here but I don't think it'll work properly. I just the lolly sticks and things like that and I've just you know, the, the, the dipping wash again and just highlighted again with a bit of a uh, grey wash and I was just going to uh, put these around there but to, to sort of as if the fence had been broken down I was going to put the fence which was basically lolly sticks again I was going to put the fence sort of there I've got three bits there And a bit there, and then the rest was going to be sort of as, as if the tank had well, that's so that's be down, and which I still might do, you know, break that up a little bit and have the uh, and have the assault gun, <sighs> a big mortar. Excuse me, bring this down here, and I was going to just have it roughly. At an angle coming through there as such. Just something similar like sim simpler like that. You know, maybe bring it a bit farther forward. Let's put it on this uh, let's just bust that off there. And we can just pop it onto here. So we can sort of see if, if you know what I mean with the as if it's coming through, breaking through the fence. And I'll probably break this, you know, some of these uh, bits of wood back onto there, as if it's broken some of the fence off, and some of it obviously hasn't gone through yet. It's just some bits of wood down here, and I think that's all it really needs. I don't think it really needs too much, too much else, to be perfectly honest. And I've got a, a flag there, which is on the top, which needs to be finished off here as well, but. I think I may go ahead and do that. You know, it's, it's just so much simple. Nothing, nothing too uh, difficult funding. Obviously, I've got to uh, make sure all this is as if the tracks are actually onto the thing, which I can work that shortly. Or do I need to bring that slightly back here, probably? And again, probably back here again. So oh, it's on a line like sort of there, I think. Let me just see. And then I'll just bring this, which is the bigger bit, up off the same size. And then we can sort of raise it up slightly, come as if it's coming up the ridge. And we can just bury the tracks into that, which is not a problem. Yeah, so I think we'll probably do something along those lines with the damaged ones and and some more broken bits of wood and things like that. I don't think I'll have any figures on it. I'm not too. I've got, so I've got the one figure that came with the kit, you know, which is just the he's just standing there with his hands on his hip as if he's uh, pleased with himself. Type thing. So there's no real action in that figure at all. So what I was going to probably do, I do have a uh, if I can find him. 
There's somewhere about one from the uh, Tamiya Vermac tank crew. I'm here having him standing up here on just behind the flag, but he's been knocking us looking out as if he's you know looking for a you know a target, which I probably will do once I find him wherever I put him. Let's put him somewhere, I think I know where he's at. I put all the figures together, didn't I? Yeah I did. Right here. Put the figures in here. No, they're just odd figures, there must be somewhere. There must be somewhere. Organised again, as we're not, as normal. Ah, this is here. They're in here. Yeah, so I was thinking. Well, this gentleman standing up there, just behind the flag, if I can get him to stand. A bit of blue tack anyway. A little bit of blue tack here. Just a bit of blue tack, just so he's sort, of, he's sort of looking out there. And I have one here which is finished, this one is finished. <laughs> I don't think I really need him really to be perfectly honest. I think I just have the one figure. Let's have him sitting at the side. He's pointing at something else. I could have some, something like that, you know. Around those, like that. Simple enough, isn't it? It's not difficult. So I'll probably go along and do that. That's when my next my next part of it will be to uh, to do that. I think that's it. I think that's the figure that I was going to use. I've got some old figures in here. So there's this other figure here as well. And there's a figure, old Tania figure, which is rubbish. I'm just using for uh, trying to do different things on him. But yeah, so I'll probably do something along those lines. So I'll have to get some more lolly sticks with the curved edge, with the round edges as well. I shall have to use those for something else. It's no problem. So I'll do. I'll uh, come back when I've done uh, this next bit, the fences and broken fences and things like that. Come out this just his and tidy it up basically. Make sure the figures are all correct. Get the flag sort of drooping naturally along the uh, front of the tank there. And I say I'm still waiting for the um, the, the, the threat from uh, Edward. Yeah, they still haven't sent it yet, so I'm still waiting for that to arrive to do to so I can carry on doing the uh, insides. So I'll, I'll carry on with this now and then I'll get back to you once again when uh, I've got the fences sorted and the crew's done and just a general tidy up and I think we're about there. So I'll be back soon. Right back again ladies and gentlemen as you can see I've totally done the opposite of everything I was going to do. I didn't like the wooden fencing so what I decided to do was build some little walls and the tank, that's why the tank, I keep saying tank, the uh, assault gun is breaking through them. So all the, uh, this, it's the, because the moulds are similar to Simon Camp as the, uh, from Di Diorami Debris. Um, little you know, you use your plastic, your plastic, your Herculite and things like that. And the cup, these these ones are um, which ones are these? Cobblestones, cobblestones. Can't remember which ones they are. Told me had not gone. So I cast a few of these. I have a few bits and pieces in me. You know what? I, what a cape plus the stuff that Simon sent me a few weeks ago. So as you can see, I've uh, made two walls. Let me just zoom in a little, touching. Let me see a bit better if I bring it down. And bring it up. 
bring it away again there. As you can see there, I built the walls. You know, higgledy piggledy. Not really, no, no, I'm no bricklayer, as they say, but it didn't have to be. And just, uh, just colour slightly with the grey, and then I've um, dusted them with a white ash. Well, it's not white, like a grey ash to represent the brick dust. And on there, where you see the leaves and things, dead leaves, and it's basically horsehair, the rubberized horsehair, which I've uh, laid on there and stuck some leaves to, and it's just like a creeping vine over a wall, things like that, you know, just so much hide them, you know, just up there, I've got a plain wall. So I've done that on both sides. And the grass you see me do from last time, well, this part didn't because I, the, uh, the video didn't record when I was. Uh, let's just zoom back out again. Out. See, it's just the static grass with the static grass. I've picked a few different layers, and I have some of these one little flower ones that I had. I forgot all about them, which I found when I was cleaning my cupboards out. So I thought they would look quite nice just to break it up a bit. And obviously the, the dead leaves, the dry leaves, things like that on there just to uh, get a bit of colour contrast. And the figures are from, well, let's get around there in a minute, and this, obviously there's a German flag on there which I got from eBay. I can't remember the site. If I remember I'll put it in the in the um, link below. So I just thought I'd just you know, try one out, weathered it a bit, made it a little bit dirty, and just draped it across. Yeah, I've seen a few you know, German vehicles with this sort of thing draped across, not necessarily this one, or if, if, even if it ever did, but I thought it would just do something different again. Uh, as you come around again, you've seen me do the base, that's just the base work with the um, the soil and the uh, orchid, the orchid soil whizzed up in a, a blender just to make it a bit finer. It's always a bit too tough to grass again there, uh, around the edges. Just to break that colour up again, and you can see there's a bit of thing coming over that wall there again. And then with these two figures, they were from the um, the Menking Tiger, and I didn't really like them on the Tiger, so I uh, I thought I'd use them on here. They don't look too bad, not brilliant, but they're okay. And obviously, there's the uh, there's the rear of the tank. Tank again, tank assault gun. I'll get my fingers wrapped if I say a tank once more. Right. It's, it's just a plain simple diorama or vignette or whichever you, whatever you want to call it, but it's nothing too elaborate. Oh, it's just something simple, just sort of uh, to, show the, to show it off. You need to. Uh, I didn't do that last time, did that? Yeah. So that's quite nice in there again. The, this is the part you saw me do the static grass with uh, before. I said, well, I did it a different way because I had already done that. So I tried to hide that and explain what I was doing. There's just a few bits of twigs off the old branches in the in the uh, in the garden. And there again, a couple of little flower tufts as well, just to break it up. And there's the uh, like Virginia Virginia creeper, I'll call it. Yeah, I think that's what they're called. Just creeping along the sides of the. Uh, the sides of the walls. Yeah, I'm quite happy with it. Very happy with it. It's, it's, it was a present brought for my birthday by uh, George from George Model Kits. So I hope he's pleased with it. I say I'm very happy with how it came out. I know I didn't really show that too much on making the diorama, but, but a lot of it's just bog standard stuff you can find on the internet, you know. There's nothing, nothing I've done any different to anybody else. It was just a shame I, the, the camera didn't uh, wasn't working when I did this bit here because it's quite, this is quite nice with a different cut. They've got six millimeter, two millimeter, four millimeter, and eight millimeter grass tufts, a varying shade. Just to, you know, because all grass is not all the same colour, is it? it? Just, you know, just, to, and this is slightly risen up, as you know. So it's, it's quite a slight angle up through the wall. Obviously, he's going to the uh, the commander is on the lookout for anything to uh, on the horizon that needs bombarding with this big beast of a gun. Yeah, so you know, all in all, I'm I'm very very happy with it. Very happy with it. So it's just a pound land frame, not nothing 
Actually, this was only I went into uh, what's the one that's fallen that's gone into receivership, Pound World, and they were actually fifty p. I've got four of them for fifty for four of them for two pounds. So I thought I'll have I'll have them. Well, they'll come in useful, different varying sizes and shapes and colours, but yeah, they'll come in nice, nice and useful. So that's the uh, the final reveal of the Sturm Tiger, to me a 135 Sturm Tiger. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy building this kit, really did, nice and enjoyable. Something a bit different, never built anything like that before. Obviously, I've built the salt guns, but not not the uh, thing like this. I have the the old uh, Tamiya Brum bar as well. Thinking about getting that out of my stash and building that eventually as well. Let's say the next will be the uh, T55 Enigma. The uh, first time it's the uh, sort of modern warfare for me. So we'll have to see how that comes out. So I'm going to do a slight build log on that as well. But yeah, very happy indeed. So that's the conclusion of the Stern Tiger and Small Dio, or Vignette, whichever you want to call it. I know there's a definition between the two, but I can never remember. So, there we go. So I'd just like to say thank you very much for uh, taking your time out of the day just to watch this small uh, video. I thank all my subscribers, old and new, thank you very much indeed for... Uh, the comments and the support throughout these last 12 months. I've just had the account over now or over 12 months, so it's uh, going in the right direction. Don't expect miracles overnight, but it's moving in the, in, the, in the right direction. So this is Greg signing off, and we'll see you again soon.